A real-time clock, or RTC, is a device that accurately tracks the passage of time, a staple for timekeeping projects or projects that need to do some kind of scheduling. The Picadev RTC loses less than a second per year and features supercapacitor backup. That means that it can tolerate power outages of about a week. When connected to power, the supercapacitor charges, and if power is removed, that supercapacitor will keep the clock running so that it doesn't lose the time. I'm gonna show you how to connect one to a Raspberry Pi Pico so that we can accurately measure time on the Pico, as well as schedule some events in the future using alarms. Let's get started. To follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi Pico with pin soldered facing down, a PicoDev real-time clock and expansion for Pico, and a PicoDev cable to connect everything together. Plug your Pico into the expansion board, making sure that the USB connector is on the same side as the two-pin battery connector. Plug the PicoDev cable into the bottom and connect the other end to your real-time clock. And I've gone and mounted my hardware onto this PicoDev platform to keep it nice and stable. And connect to your computer with USB. Head to the download section in the article and download the source files. We'll need the PicoDev Unified Library, right-click that and save link as. And we'll need the device module, PicoDev RV3028, right-click that and save link as. I'm saving these to a PicoDev directory in my documents. Open Thonny, navigate to where you downloaded your files and connect to your Pico. Then just select both those files. I click the first file, hold down shift, click the second file, then right click and upload to. And now my files are uploaded to the Pico. Now for an example to set and read the time and date. In the article, find that first example and copy the example code. Copy all the code in that text box, control C and paste that into Thonny. I'm going to save this to my Pico as main.py. This code works in two parts. It first initializes the clock and sets the correct time and date, and then it loops forever and prints a timestamp every second. We first import the device driver and a sleep function to create a delay, and then we initialize the RTC and store that as an object called RTC. So every time you see RTC, we're referring to this clock. And now we can set the time and date. It is currently the 18th of May and it's 3.09 in the afternoon. So I'll change day to 18, May is five, and it's 3.09, that's 15.09. We can leave seconds as zero, that's fine. I'm going to leave the clock in 24 hour mode. We could use AM or PM here as well. And today is a Wednesday, which is the third day in the week, but that is two because we count from zero in the RTC. So assuming that Monday is zero, Wednesday will be two. Next up, we're gonna call set date time, which will commit those values to the clock. Let's give the script a run. I'll click run, which will save and run the script. And you can see in the shell, we have some information printing. I'll just press Control C to stop that. And let's have a look at what we got. We have a message here saying the time is 15.9 and today is Wednesday. And then what follows looks like a bunch of timestamps in a like standard Unix time format where we have year, month, day, and then hour, minute, second. Going back into the code, we can see once we have set the date and the time, the very next thing we do is get the date and the time. That reads the date time variables off the real time clock and stores them back in these properties, day, month, year, hour, minute, second. And then we can do whatever we like with that information. Here we have a print, the time is, and then we have hours converted to a string and minute converted to a string. And that's this first line here, which explains why there's no leading zero in front of this nine. We're just printing minute, which has the value nine, not zero nine. On the next line, we have today is Wednesday, and that is taken care of by this print statement, today is, and then we concatenate that with a property called the weekday name. So we can access information about the weekday as a number numerically, zero, one, two, all the way to six. But we also have this other property weekday name, which will return for us a string of the weekday for some nice prints. Then we have the infinite loop, which is calling the timestamp method. That returns a string, and that is what is printing in the shell here, this formatted string every second. Now to test out the power backup capability. Back in the tutorial, we'll just grab this small example under running on power backup. 
and I'll replace everything in main with this code. This is just a stripped down version of the previous example that only reads the time. We don't wanna set the time here. We should only have to do that once. We wanna make sure that after a power cycle, we're just going to read the time and make sure that it still makes sense. So I'll run this script and we can see that the time is accurate. And now if I remove power, I'll just unplug my Pico, wait for a little while, plug it back in. And now if I restart my Pico, we can see that it has kept the time. It's still 3.18 in the afternoon. If this had reverted back to factory defaults, it would be the first of the first 2000. So we can prove that our clock is indeed backed up by the supercapacitor. For one last example, we'll head down to the advanced section and look at alarms and scheduling. Not only can we program the date and time onto a real-time clock, but we can give it a desired date and time for when we want to trigger an alarm. This can be useful for just a simple alarm like you would set in the morning to get out of bed, but it's also useful for periodic scheduling. So if you want to do something at the top of every hour, you want to do something once per day or once per month, that's what this example is all about. Under the alarms and scheduling section, grab that example code and copy it into Thonny. I'll paste over everything in main and let's take a look. We have our normal imports and initialization. This time we're calling the alarm setup method and it's the arguments that we pass into this method that determine when the alarm is going to be triggered. So if we pass in just minutes equals zero, this alarm will fire the first time that minutes becomes zero. So that would be at the start of every hour. Let's try it. It's currently 3.21 and 20 seconds. So I will set the minutes to 22 and then run this script. Okay, so this looks pretty similar to what we saw before. We can see we have the timestamp being printed. Here it's only printing once every two seconds and we'll, we'll get back to why that is. You should see in about 10 seconds, we're going to cross that moment that I set the alarm for. 59, we're crossing now, and the alarm is triggered. Let's take a closer look at the code. In the infinite loop, we are printing the timestamp as we've already seen. This time we're calling RTC check alarm. This method checks if we've crossed the alarm threshold. It'll return false if we haven't crossed that threshold and it'll return true the first time we do. That means that you won't get subsequent alarms, for example, if you check multiple times in the same minute. We only saw the message alarm triggered once, the first time that we called check alarm after the alarm had gone off. So this is how we would trigger an alarm every hour. I'll comment that out with Alt 3 and uncomment the next one with Alt 4. You can see this one has a few more arguments. Here, we're triggering on weekday 2 at 13.23. So that is if we're assuming Monday is zero, then this will be on the third day of the week, which is a Wednesday. It'll trigger every Wednesday at 1.23 in the afternoon. And you can see that we can also include date as one of the arguments. So this one would trigger on the first day of every month. And so of course you can mix and match any of these parameters to create a schedule that you need. It could be for a specific day of the week or day in the month or a specific time on a specific day, whatever you like. This scheduled action is very simple. It's just a print statement, but this could be anything that you want it to be. And so there you have it, accurate timekeeping and event scheduling using a Picadev real-time clock. There are a few other advanced examples in the tutorial if you really wanna squeeze the maximum functionality out of this device, but this is more than enough to get started with most timekeeping projects. From here, you can make a clock, an alarm clock. You can schedule actions for your remote project to do create a data logger and use it as the timestamp in the data logger. So many projects rely on accurate timekeeping. If you have any questions about this content, do let us know on the forums. We're full-time makers and happy to help. Until next time, happy making. <laughs>